everyone, we are back for chapter 8 of I Survive the Great Chicago Fire, and I'm on the edge of my seat because I just don't know what's going to happen to Oscar, I don't know what happens gonna, what's going to happen to those two kids, Bruno and Jenny, it's just is a crazy time. So, chapter 8 is where we left off. Again, Oscar felt as though he were being attacked by a wild animal, a, mos a monster with burning tentacles and boiling breath. It grabbed him, clawed at him, and spun him around. Smoke gushed into his nose and down his throat, filling his lungs with searing poison. He couldn't open his eyes, but he knew the fire was all around him. He dropped to the ground, crawling blindly, groping for the door, but he had no idea where it was. It was like being trapped in a flaming maze. His lungs were ready to explode. Was this the end? Was he really going to die right here? And then he heard a voice. This way! This way! Mama? Turn right! Turn right! The voice shouted, tugging him, guiding him. Oscar turned. No, it wasn't Mama's voice. It was Jenny's. Yes, now straight! Hurry! And then he felt a hand on his arm, pulling him up. Seconds later, he was out the door. He was just steps away from the house when there was a terrifying whoosh! an explosion of hot air. They rushed forward and Jenny grabbed Bruno from where he had been hiding behind a barrel. They ran across the street and fell to the ground. Oscar's head throbbed. His entire body felt as if it had been roasted. He lay back and closed his eyes. For a long minute, he stayed there trying to catch his breath. He might have stayed like that for hours, but only a minute or so passed before he felt someone breathing in his face. He opened his eyes and saw a huge curly-headed boy hovering over him with wide eyes. Bruno. Hey, you're not dead, he croaked out happily. Hush, Bruno, Jenny whispered. That is not a polite thing to say. But he not dead, Bruno insisted, putting his face even closer to Oscar's so his slimy little nose touched Oscar's nose. Then he put his gooey mouth on Oscar's ear and whispered, You're not dead. The kid wasn't going to quit. Oscar put his hand on Bruno's head. I know, he said. Jenny kneeled down and gently peeled Bruno away from Oscar. Let's give him a little room, Jenny said. Oscar managed to sit up. He stared ahead at the little house, which was being torn apart by the flames. The wood moaned and sighed as it collapsed into the fire, as if crying out in pain. It was sickening, like watching a rabbit get torn apart by a coyote. Bruno wiggled closer to Oscar until his small shoulder pressed against Oscar's arm. My house, he said, pointing sadly. Oscar didn't know what to say, so he just put his arm around the boy. The fire burned so bright that it lit up all of their faces. It was the first time Jenny had the chance to get a good look at Oscar. Now Oscar waited to see the shock in her eyes when she realized who he was. But there was no flash of recognition. She looked exactly how Oscar felt, scared, dazed, and amazed to be alive. Their eyes locked together and Oscar could tell that Jenny didn't recognize the kid she'd tricked at the train station. She saw a different boy the boy who had helped her and Bruno escape from the fire. And as Oscar looked at Jenny, he didn't see a helpless orphan or a ruthless thief. He saw a brave girl who watched over her brother all by herself, whose voice had led Oscar out of the blazing house in the nick of time. And then there was Bruno, who grinned at Oscar as though he'd been best friends with him all of their lives. I, Bruno, he said looking up at Oscar and puffing out his chest. I'm Oscar, Oscar said. Ocker, Bruno said. I'm Jenny, Jenny said. They all sat there a minute, looking at each other. Had he and Jenny really just only laid eyes on each other tonight? Oscar eased his arm from around Bruno and struggled to his feet, brushing the dust and ash off his burned clothes. His body ached, but his mind felt surprisingly clear. He knew exactly what to do. We need to get to the Palmer House Hotel, he said. 
the word we very clearly. My mother is there, Oscar said. The hotel is fireproof. We'll be safe there. Oscar picked up Bruno and held out his free hand to Jenny. She took it, took it and gripped it tight. And together, they began their journey through Chicago's burning streets. And that is the end of chapter eight. So luckily, they all made it out alive. But will they make it out of the city? Who knows? Will he even make it to his mom? Is his mom even still there? Is the Palmer house even really fireproof? And how so? So many questions left unanswered. So stay tuned for chapter nine. See you soon.